is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News at 7. I am Frank of Malape. As preparations for 2015 general elections get underway, main opposition party in Nigeria or Progressive Congress says it has all it takes to dislodge the ruling People's Democratic Party from Asorok. Rashid Rashid took up some APC leaders across the country of their preparedness for the 2015 general polls. The strong determination of the major opposition party in Nigeria, the All Progressives Congress to put an end to the 15-year run of government at the center by People's Democratic Party come 2015 is now gathering momentum. At the moment, APC controls 16 states out of the 36 states of the Federation and it is poised to retain its grip on power in Ikiti and Oshun states where the governorship elections will be conducted this year on June 21st and August 9th respectively. If you look at this now, you will know there's no opposition in the Kitty. The Kitty State belongs to APC. There's no doubt about it. We are clear-headed and clear-minded about it. This is this has never happened in the history of these states. A transition from a government to another government. It has never happened. It's a confirmation of victory to come. For states under the control of the PDP, particularly the home state of President Jonathan, APC sounds loud its intention to take over the governance of those states. Former Governor of Bielsa State, Timmy Perry Silva, has this to say on the chances of APC in Bielsa. Bielsa has never been more divided in the history of the state. And unfortunately, this is when we should have been more united. So now for APC, we are very, very strong in Bielsa. We are very confident because the president has not done anything for Bielsa State and the state government is not performing at all. Ondo State is another peculiar state. Presently, it is the only state in the southwest not controlled by APC. Rather, it is under the control of Labour Party, which is regarded by politicians as an extension of the PDP. The landslide victory of the incumbent Olusha Gumemiko at the recently concluded governorship election in Ondo also posed a strong question for APC. However, Ondo State Chairman of the Opposition Party, Isaac Kikimeke, dismissed this insisting that the All Progressives Congress is very much on ground in Ondo State. What we are saying in Ondo is that we want what is happening in Ekiti, what is happening in Oshu, what is happening in Oyo, what is happening in Lagos, what is happening in Ogu to happen in Ondo. Politicians and the ruling PDP have on several occasions boast of the party, holding on to power at the center for 60 years. However, Timmy Pere Silva has a contrary opinion. You can see that the PDP government has failed in the center. And that is what has really necessitated the existence, the invention of APC. If the PDP government had not failed, then there would have been no need for an APC. The 2015 general elections will no doubt be a keenly contested battle. All Progressives Congress, which appears to be the haven for all aggrieved members of the ruling PDP, still have major hurdles to cross before the 2015 general polls. The national convention for the party and the presidential primaries will prove to be a litmus test for the party. All Nigerians eagerly wait to see what the future days will reveal for the opposition group. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Adoikiti. Controversies continue to trail the source of attacks on political figures and structures in Ekiti State ahead of the June 21 governorship election. Ayo Farashi, the People's Democratic Party candidate, has laid the cause of violence at the doorstep of the Nigerian police, an accusation the Ekiti State Commissioner of Police, Felix Rihanna, described as stupid. Rashid Rashid monitored this development from Ado Ekiti and filed in this report. Leaders in Ekiti politics have refused to sheath their swords and the theater is getting hotter as the People's Democratic Party candidate in the forthcoming governorship election, Ayo Fayoshi names the police as prime suspect in the political violence witnessed in the state. 
This allegation was vehemently opposed by the Ekiti State Police Commissioner who came in defense of the police operations in the state. There is no violence except as orchestrated by the referees of this election. I plead with the police to be neutral, do purely police work, and protect this election. And I accuse the police of violence, but we know those trade violence. Police don't perpetrate violence. It's the political parties and their candidates and their foot soldiers that perpetrate violence. The former governor went further to accuse the police of connivance with the incumbent government in the arraignment and prosecution of electoral offenders. The moment you have influence of the chief executive that is consuming the actual officers to carry out those duties, they will be toothless. You have arrested and arraigned the court over 70 uh, uh, persons in respect of that. And this across all the parties. What we will do is that when we arrest you, we take you to court. What happens in the court is left to the judiciary, but we will be called upon any time we are required. The rage gets to its height when Ayafao, she says, thugs have been imported to Wikiti by some political parties to cause mayhem and destabilize the June 21st election. And the police are in the know, but are doing virtually nothing to check it. This election is supposed to be rigged on the first day, villages, because thugs have been harbored. All hotels in the city have been hired. We would expect the police to be bold enough to force these hotels, ask these people where did they come from, what is their identity, is it their state? Police with other security agencies and their name, especially the uh, State Security Service, Federal Safety Corps, Immigration, uh, NDLA, uh, prisons, as well as the immigration and others who have been working together under the platform of interagency consultative committee on election security. The duo never let down their guards as they both maintained their position. If I tell you this place is not good, good police there. Let me see if I was able to be there, good police there. Don't face a particular area, block a particular area, and allow crime at your back. Oh, is detected, detected by the leadership of each of the political parties acting in consonance with the, uh, the, the gubernatorial ca candidates. In other words, it is not the police that creates insecurity. Rather, it is the political parties, the politicians. With the governorship poll in Ekiti State just days away, the credibility and the outcome of the poll is being put to test by allegations of partisanship on the part of the law enforcement agents. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoe Kiti. As the August 9 governorship election in Oshun State gradually approaches, a former governor of Oshun State and aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, Isayaka Adeliki, has defected to the All Progressives Congress with some of his loyalists and supporters in the party. The former governor who was welcomed to the party by the interim national chairman, Bisi Akonde, Ekitin State Governor Kayo Defaimi and Raul Vare Bashola spoke in Yoruba, describing his journey in the ABC as returning to where he truly belongs. Some of those who defected with him include Peter Babalola, a former chief of the staff to Olagusoyo Yolola, who praised Governor Arek Bashola for his dedication to the development of Anshu State, which he said was not the case when he was in office. Staff to the governor for almost seven years. We didn't perform, not to our fault then, but we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't take a politics or governance as a serious matter. But this guy came and proved to everybody that governance is a serious business. He doesn't sleep. In our own case, by 1 p.m., we are in other playing golf. So the difference is clear. The vision has hit the Labour Party in Oshun State as party primaries were held simultaneously at State Secretariat in Oshubu and Leisure Spring Hotel in Egbedore. Our Tamino Mews Peter Boti has more in this report. Labour Party in Oshun State has held its primaries. The primary which held at the Leisure Spring Hotel had a National Party representative and state INEC officers in attendance. 
However, former PDP state chairman Fataya Akimbadi emerged candidate. Those of them that are genuinely agreed, we've spoken, I mean, we've organized a kind of meeting with them. They are, they are already with us. They've returned fully into the uh, party. At the moment, a candidate emerges, everybody will have to come because the authority has spoken. The authority is the national uh, uh, headquarters of the party and has spoken. Simultaneously, another Labour Party primary is held at Oshogbo State Secretariat where National Party members and INEC officials were conspicuously absent. When Call TV News asked Secretary Afolabi of the absence of national representatives and INEC officials, he had this to say. Alaji Fatai Akebade went ahead to adopt himself without election, but we, the uh, authentic Labour Party, we realize that the best is to conduct the normal election, do the democracy as it's supposed to be, and let the appropriate candidate emerge. Olaji Bolan Hall won the primaries in a democratic manner devoid of rancor and turn a chaos. This uh, form, the nomination form, has to go from local, uh, from state, from state uh, uh, INEC, not national. It is people in the state that will nominate a candidate and send it to the national, national with two factions and two candidates emerging from Labour Party in Ocean State, this division is likely to pose danger for the party. President Golok Jonathan has met with the President of Mali, Mohamed Keita, in continuation of con consultation to solve the problems of insurgency in northern Mali and northeastern Nigeria. The meeting was held behind closed doors at the presidential villa Abuja while addressing state house correspondent after the meeting. Keita says he has come to meet with his Nigerian counterpart on the issue of insecurity and to see what both nations can do jointly to curb the problem. It will be recalled that Jonathan Keita and other ECOWAS leaders had met on the same issue in Accra, Ghana on Friday. The president also met with some clerics from Senegal, led by Khalifa Sheikh Amar Tijani Inyas, the grandson of late Shehu Tijani Ibrahim Inyas, the founder of the Tijani sect. The clerics came on the invitation of Jonathan, who is under increasing pressure from within and outside the country over the abductor of Chivo school girls and the spate of killings by the Boko Haram said. The group of clerics, numbering about 10, met with the president for about an hour during which day of prayers for peace and stability in Nigeria. Why the African Union has announced plans to engage the federal government and other stakeholders in a meeting in the fresh move to rescue more than 200 girls abducted by insurgents in Chibok Borno State. The AU Special Envoy for Women, Peace and Security, Venita Diop, made the disclosure at the close of the Conference of Ministers of Social Development in Addis Ababa. The obvious to lead a delegation to Abuja next Monday is to intimate the federal government on the new approach to rescue the girls. The envoy will address the meeting and AU's effort to secure the girls' says The continental body will continue to evolve mechanisms to protect the girl child through robust policies on education, among others. The AU ministers under the auspices of the fourth conference on social development conveyed with stakeholders to reveal efforts toward ending child marriage in Africa. As Nigerians eagerly wait the translation of President Jonathan's Democracy Day declaration of total war and terror to action, public families have called on the people to cooperate with government to end insurgency. Chuka Nabunife and Douglas Anneli state that it is part of the civic responsibility to assist in solving national crisis. They disclosed this during a visit to our legal studios. Amataya Law has details. Evidently, from the incessant terror attacks unleashed on the country by members of the deadly Boko Haram sect, security operatives in the country no doubt seem to be overwhelmed. The killing of over 55 students of the government college, Buniyadi Yobe State, and the abduction of over 200 girls from a secondary school in Chibok, Borono State, have raised the eyebrow of the whole world to the burden the nation now bear in fighting terrorism. 
However, the government of Nigeria has declared an outright war on terror. Reacting to the declaration, Douglas Anile says the commitment of government to the war on terror is not strong enough. Well, he was the one who went around the country asking Nigerians for, to vote for him, right? So, I mean, that is it. If, 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 you, if, you, if, you don't, if you can't stand the heat, you leave the kitchen. The government must put Boko Haram under tremendous pressure so that they will be more favorably disposed for peace. Criticizing the actions trailing incessant terror attacks, Chuka Nabuife accused Nigerians of lack of patience and seeing an end to insurgency. All manner of people are, are, have descended on us looking for all manner. The activist is looking for money to organize one protest. He either gets it from this opposition party or from the mainstream party or from government. The, the security, so-called security expert, is looking for one grant. The journalist is looking for one grant. The man in society is looking, ah, they're not dividend of democracy. Wow. Is it not from the same cow that we are doing this we are? It is getting out of hand. He stressed that lack of cooperation by the people has led to failure of government in adequately addressing the issues. We are going overboard. We are being emotional. We are not being logical. We are being zany, a bit, a little bit frenzy, agitated like the light that the pampan infant on the lamp of the mother. On the way forward, both analysts charge Nigerians on the road to play for peace to reign. People should also cooperate with government. The government cannot do it alone. These Boko Haram people, they are human beings. They are not invisible. They eat, they drink, they, they perform the normal functions of a normal human being. People see them. They are not ghosts. So people should be willing to volunteer information to government that can help to arrest this situation. It is a lose-lose game. You understand? Yes. If we continue to condemn the, the security operators, okay. because they are actually they are, they are our bastions, the fence to our exercising of our even uh, freedom. The end to insurgency many believe is close at end. However, all ends must be on the plow to ensure proper synergy between the people and the government. Omotayo Alo, Core TV News, Lagos. Well, reactions continue to trail President Jonathan's declaration of outright war against insurgency and the offer of amnesty to repentant terrorists. Bido Koro went to town to feel the pulse of the nation on the issue filed in this report. Reactions continue to trail President Goodluck Jonathan's Democracy Day broadcast to the nation directing security forces to launch a full-scale military operation to put an end to the insurgency in the country. Legal practitioners Femi Falana and Chukwemeka Eze both in an exclusive charge with Call TV News berated the government on timeliness of the directive and the capacity of the nation's armed forces to carry out the operation. The president didn't say anything new. The belief of the government is that there are some of the members of the satanic force that may want to lay down their arms and embrace amnesty. Why the rest will have to be fought to stand still? In his usual uh, manner of doing the right thing a little bit late. This one is a little bit late. But I think he has succeeded in proving those that said we should handle Boko Haram with kid, kid gloves wrong. Because many people have been saying you should pamper them, you should do this now. The Nigerian forces have the capacity. Uh, I will regard to the record of performance in peacekeeping operations around the world. On the presidency's offer of amnesty to the members of Boko Haram, Falana agrees that it is a possible way out of the current terror attacks. The last time government did that, the Boko Haram sect said it was the government that needed amnesty from them and not the other way around. Because the government for them had committed grievous, iniquitous offenses against their members. Examining the presidency's directive and offer of amnesty from a security perspective, Richard Amua, a security expert, advised for a cautious approach in order to prevent a reprisal attacks. My question to Mr. President is that are we launching this, you know, this full scale war right, right you know, now with all these children with Boko Haram? If we are launching a full scale war, against Boko Haram at this time. The point here is that, are we praying or are we working to bring these children back alive? Because sincerely, going full scale what now would really 
no, we, we not, we not all go away. With this president's declaration of total war against insurgency, Nigerians wait for the days ahead to reveal to them if they can go to sleep with their eyes closed. Bido Koro, Core TV News, Lagos. One year after the federal government declared a state of emergency in the three northeastern states of Adamawa, Borono and Yobe, the continued spate of attacks has necessitated another extension. This is coming against the backdrop of an international intervention over the abduction of more than 200 schoolgirls in Chibo Borono state. This report takes a look at the emergency rule in the three northeastern states one year after. The state of emergency was first declared in May 2013 after attacks by Boko Haram reportedly claimed over 2,000 lives in gun and bomb attacks across northern Nigeria. The emergency rule was extended in November 8 of the same year when attacks by insurgents continued. Nigerians have continued to react to the incessant attacks that has been the target of innocent and defenseless people. I think uh, the security should provide more security in all the whole state, especially the northern areas. Because what is happening today like, is a kind of putting fears in everybody's mind. The common man is not safe. And even the rich man is not even safe. If the security would deploy more troops around the whole city. Since he came into power, inherited problems, crisis, and the situation where there is crisis, it is difficult to achieve any meaningful development. And because it is only in a conducive atmosphere that what you plan, you can be able to machine them out. The government should come out and tell us the truth. They know when all these things started. When it started in a smaller way, they know how to stop it, but they did not do anything about it because it is not affecting them directly. It is only the masses that is affected. The Boko Haram insurgency climbs with the abduction of over 200 schoolgirls from their dormitory in Chibok. The federal government sought for an extension of the emergency rule, which the two chambers of the National Assembly approved. As read out by the leader of the Senate and seconded, by the minority leader. Say aye. aye. Again, say nay. The eyes of it. For some interest groups, including Arewa Consultative Forum and the Pan Northern Social Political Organization, kicked against the extension, saying it was absolutely unnecessary to extend the emergency rule since it didn't solve the problem of insurgency. This second extension of the emergency rule is full of expectations from Nigerians to end the insurgency that is now at an all-time high. I still have you back. Uh, we'll take a short break now. We will be back after uh, now to bring you foreign stories. Please stay with us. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 Our 24 hour news station From time immemorial women are birthed life shaped character and by extension influenced the society Morimi of Ife a Moten of Benin Queen Aminat of Zaria all women of influence and power Whether it's before election after election How ironical Women being so powerful yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News.
You're still watching Call TV News at 7. For more information and our news and other programs, visit our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Call TV News. You can also visit our Twitter page at Call TV News NG. And also on YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash Call TV Space News. Outside Nigeria now, a Frenchman with suspected ties to Islamic radicals in Syria has been arrested over last week's fate to shooting at the Jewish Museum in Brussels, the Belgian capital. The suspected gunman, 29-year-old Mehdi Nemuche, was arrested in the southern French city of Marseille in possession of a Kalashnok rifle and a handgun similar to the ones used in the attack on May 24 in Belgium. He has been detained on suspicion of murder and attempted murder in connection with a terrorist enterprise, a French judicial source disclosed. The shooting by a lone gunman killed three people outright, an Israeli cop couple and a French woman, while the fourth victim, a 24-year-old Belgian man, was left clinically dead. Authorities have released chilling security camera footage of the gunman wearing a cap and sunglasses, walking into the museum, removing an automatic rifle from a bag and shooting him through a door before making an exit. French customs officials detained Nemoche at Marzeau's coach station on board a bus arriving from Amsterdam via Brussels. According to sources close to the investigation, he was carrying a Kalashnikov automatic rifle and a gun with ammunition in his luggage as well as a miniature video camera at the time of arrest. Well, and that will be a wrap on Court TV News at 7. Many thanks for watching. I am Franco Malape. Don't forget to join us at 9.45 p.m. for our primetime bulletin. Bye for now.